Hi everyone, my name's Indica. I'm a Bird School project instructor and today I'll be showing you how to create a bird sound map in SitSpot. The primary purpose of this activity is to write down bird sounds and behaviors that you see in here. So when choosing a sit spot, it's important to find a space that has a nice variety of birds. Where you choose your sit spot will directly affect your bird watching experience. You're going to want to find a space near the edge of your backyard or the edge of a grass patch. You will generally have an easier time finding birds if you are near trees, fences, or objects that, where birds can perch. If you don't have an easily accessible outdoor space, you can do this by making observations through your house or apartment window. Once you have your sit spot, you can go ahead and start your sound map. So you're going to start your sound map by drawing one large circle. This circle should take up most of your journal page. Now within that large circle, draw another small circle and write me inside of it. This smaller circle represents you and where you will be sitting in relation to your sound map. Now depending on where you are sitting, you're going to draw physical landmarks around you. So when creating a sound map, it's really important to remember that everything you draw and write down should be solely for yourself. Um, this is not an art class. There is no right or wrong way to draw a bird collar behavior. The way you write down or draw your observations are really there to help remind you of what you observed when you come back to look at your journal entry at a later time. Okay, cool. Now that you have some reference points, you're going to start jotting down bird sounds and behaviors that you are noticing. There are a number of ways you can do this, so I'm going to provide a few examples to get your sound map started. A spectrogram can be a great tool for visually representing bird sounds and calls. When you're creating a spectrogram, there are a couple things to consider. First, high and low points of the spectrogram can aid in showing the pitch of the bird's notes. Um, second, breaks in spectrogram can indicate a pause in the bird's call or song, while continuous lines can represent continuous noise. Here are just a couple examples of how you can draw the spectrograms on your sound map. If you hear a bird but are unsure exactly where it's coming from, you can draw the spectrogram in the general area where you hear it. Flight patterns can be drawn starting where you see the bird within your sit spot map range and stopping once it's out of sight or out of range. The trail of the line that you draw can show the bird's flight path. And if you want to get even more creative, you can add dashed lines, which can be used to indicate the flapping pattern of the bird. When you see a bird carry out a behavior or movement, you can create a symbol to represent those observations and draw or write them out wherever the bird carries out that action. So for example, arrows can represent a back and forth motion, or in this case, a somewhat circular motion. Drawing a worm on your map can represent a bird eating food off the ground. Footprints can indicate ground movement as opposed to flight. Again, these are just some ideas of different components you can add to your sound map. You are more than welcome to get creative and come up with your own ways to draw bird sounds and behaviors. And remember that everything is for your own use and memory, so there's no wrong way to make observations or create a sound map. Now that you have your own tools and knowledge for creating a sound map and bird observations, I want you to go out and try it in your own sit spot, maybe in your backyard or your nearby park. For more Bird School Project resources, check out our website or follow us on social media.